medieval battle. Fiber Junkies, welcome back to The Color Cauldron. I'm Johanna, the owner and dyer behind Potion Yarns and host of this podcast. Thank you so much for joining me, and today I have a really chill, relaxed video for you. We're just going to catch up on what I've been working on. I haven't had just a ton of time to do my personal projects lately, uh, keeping up with a mobile baby who is literally the Energizer Bunny incarnated. I swear, I did not give birth to a baby. I gave birth to the Energizer Bunny, but instead of being pink and fuzzy, he's kind of pink and, <laughs> and not fuzzy. He doesn't have a lot of hair. <laughs> but um, anyways, I have been trying to work in knitting and crochet whenever I can, which hasn't been a ton, but I have a few things to show you. So the first thing, I'm actually really not very happy about you guys. I started a shawl that has been on my, ooh, I want to knit that for a long time list. And that is the West Fjords Wanderer by Stephen West. And uh, this shawl is designed with, um, he designed it with seven skeins of fingering weight yarn, but you hold two strands of fingering together through the whole thing, so it's kind of like a DK or light worsted weight um, gauge wise. So you use like a size eight needle. It's definitely more of a thick, chunky fabric, so it's more of a warm, thicker shawl. Um, and so I do like it in theory but I don't really like what I ended up doing because like I said, he designed it for seven full skeins of fingering weight yarn, but it says in the pattern, it's a really great way to use up leftovers and you just hold two strands together and create this marled fabric so you can use up scraps and leftover balls. I don't know about you, but I have a stupid amount of fingering and sock weight yarn that is leftover skeins, like half a skein or less. So I decided I would use up some of my leftovers. So I picked out a whole bunch. I spent forever looking at colors and holding things together. I picked out a whole bunch, like 10 different colors of leftovers and was like, I'm just going to like do this because he says in the pattern like where he changes color, but then he says, you know, if you have more than seven colors or you're using up scraps, just change whenever you feel like it. So that's what I did. And you start on the bottom making this wavy scallop. You do all these short row wedges to create this wavy like scalloping edge. It looks so pretty in his pattern and I wanted so badly to love mine. And I did the entire bottom edge with all these scraps and I kind of hate it. And I even loved it when I first started, but then I got about halfway through and was like, I don't know about this, but I kept pushing on thinking, I'll like it better when it's done. And maybe I will, but I feel like it's gargantuan, more like a blanket than a shawl. And um, I mean, I love blankets, so part of me is like, great, just keep going with it. But I, I don't love it, you guys. Um, my husband actually loves it because he's super into orange and blue. That's like one of his favorite color combinations, and there's a lot of that going on. Um, but I personally am not a fan. I don't know how I feel about it. I go back and forth between, okay, it's not my normal colors, but I like that I'm using up scraps and I can just gift it to someone or set it out as like, a, I think it really would make a really great blanket or like lap rug or something to just set around in my living room, um, which is where I am right now on this blue sofa. So I kind of feel like maybe I should just stick it out, but I don't love it. and. I am finding it really hard to follow the pattern because I don't feel like there are clear, I feel like it's not, I, I feel bad saying this because I love Stephen West and he's one of my favorite designers and I've knit so many of his patterns and I've never had an issue with his patterns before. But this particular pattern I do not feel like was written well. However, I am fully accepting responsibility that it's probably written great and I'm just probably not figuring it out because I have mommy brain, I'm constantly tired and I've just never done anything like this before. So it's probably me, it's probably me, not him. But I don't like it, you guys. It's so hard to figure out and no matter how I try to do it, it doesn't look like the pictures. Um, and he has two different samples on his pattern. I like the brighter, more rainbow colored sample that was knit using 10 colors better, but he doesn't give any directions for that. Sometimes pattern designers will have like two separate samples or two kits with the yarn. And so they'll say like, for the gray version, do this. For the blue version, do this. Um, and so that can kind of give you a little bit more help to see which one you like better and which one you want to use as your template. And he didn't really do that. He kind of just goes off of the main pattern, which I didn't, which is kind of the yellows and grays that I didn't really care for the colors as much. Um, and now I'm wishing that with a pattern this complicated, I'm wishing that I had actually just selected seven skeins of yarn 
and done it that way, the way he did his pattern. Um, so I'm trying to decide if I keep pressing on right now or if I just toss this in the garbage and pick out seven skeins and try again. And then the worst part, you pick up like a billion stitches not really, but it feels like a billion in the moment. It's actually not that difficult because you use this, um, you do this really nice I-cord uh, edging right here along the edge of the scallop. So it's really easy to just pick up into that I-cord. So as far as picking up stitches go, it's pretty easy technique here, but there are like 200 of them or something stupid like that. And um, so it is quite a bit, but you pick up all these stitches and then you're doing these really easy stockinette and garter rows and eyelets. Um, so this part is really easy and fun, so I do want to stick with it. And if you look at a close-up of these, like, two blue yarns I held together, or, like, um, I really like these two together. These, This is uh, my beatnik hand-dyed yarn. It's, like, an orangey speckle with another um, speckle yarn. Um, so I, I do like some of the colors together a lot. I've just, honestly, I've never knit a marled pattern. I know they're, like, all the rage, especially with Stephen West fans. He has a million of them, it seems. And I've always wanted to because it's always sounded really fun, but I don't really like how it, it's looking and I can't tell if it's the colors I've chosen, this particular pattern, and I think it really is just my feelings about the pattern and how much I don't like that I'm struggling to follow it. But I need some help, so leave me a comment and let me know, should I keep pressing on at least a little farther and just see what it looks like and keep using up my scraps because I do love that I'm emptying my scrap drawer. I'm struggling with deciding whether or not I should keep going or if I should just chuck it and either start the pattern over with seven new skeins of yarn that I specifically pick out to be a really nice fade color or something like that, or just scrap the pattern altogether and go pick something else. It's kind of been in timeout for the last like three weeks because I was so mad at it that I haven't done anything and I need some help deciding what to do. So leave me a comment and let me know your vote. Okay, the next thing that I have been knitting is another shawl. Surprise, surprise. I've been knitting a lot of shawls lately. If you're new to the channel, you may not know this about me, but I am like an obsessive shawl knitter. This is Fabulosity by Casa Pinka. She is a designer who is very prolific um, on the interwebs, and I have I will put a link to her shop below, um, as well as you can also find the link to the Stephen West pattern below, by the way. She is really great at putting out patterns that look really, really crisp and pristine and lovely, but are really quite easy for beginners. Um, and that's also great for advanced knitters who need like a mental break and you just want like TV knitting or car knitting or something to give yourself a break from that intricate fair isle or lace project. And I really loved this pattern called Fabulosity. Um, and I really loved the sample colors that she had shown, especially the one that has the bright pink in it. Um, and so I was using this to use up single skeins in my stash. You need four different colors. And so this one is from Machete Yarns. She's an indie dyer that I had purchased from a couple years ago. I bought one of her fade kits, not to make a fade shawl, <laughs> but just because I loved the colors in it. And then I used several of those colors for my Sunset Highway sweater. Um, but this was one skein that I did not use for that sweater that was left over, and it's just a really lovely like lavender with a bunch of white space with all these fun speckles. And I am a sucker for neon yellow, you guys. So look at these pops of neon yellow. They are so pretty. Oh, I just, I can't get enough of it. I cannot remember the colorway name, um, but it was one of her fade sets. Uh, I will try to look that up for you, but this uh, fabulous color was from Machete Yarns. This blue, this bright, bright blue is one of my hand dyed yarns called Siren Song, which I am bringing back to the shop this fall. Um, it's an older colorway from my first year in business, but I really, really love it. It's very, very just like bright, aquatic blues. Um, and then this color was also in my stash. Oh, and this bright blue was a leftover skein, by the way. I used like, like an eighth or less of a skein for one little project one time. Um, and so I had most of a skein left, so I'm using up that little bit. And then this is uh, from Three Irish Girls. It's their single ply fingering. And I got this in a D-stash sale, so it did not have a tag. It just said Three Sisters, um, or Three Irish Girls. Uh, and I'd never used their yarn before, but always wanted to try them. And I loved the soft silvery color, but there was no colorway name. So I'm sorry, I can't tell you what that is. It was just a D stash. It was already caked up and they'd just written the, the name on a ball band and wrapped it around. 
Um, so I don't know what color that is, but it's a really soft, light, like dove gray. Um, and I'm not sure if that's too light. I was going off of the sample from Casa Pinka that has the hot pink in it. And she had two colors that were really similar, but slightly different speckles. Um, and so I thought, I, I kind of like these ones together, but part of me is like, I don't know. I don't know if those are my colors. So tell me what you think about that. But I'm planning to use my fourth color that I haven't gotten to add in yet, but is coming soon, is another one of my hand dyes. This is a bright, bright, eye-searingly neon pink called Man Eater from my shop. And this is going to go, it's the bottom lace portion, and it also is worked in through the top. I think as soon as I finish this little section, there's um, a point where I get to bring this in for some little pops of color. So I'm really looking forward to adding the pink. I really think once the pink is in there, it's going to tie these three colors together that I'm kind of iffy about, and I'm, I think I'm gonna really love it then. So I'm reserving judgment until then. The pattern itself, I highly recommend. I am loving this pattern. This is probably the best Casa Pinka pattern I have ever knit before, as far as just being fun, not too difficult, but more than just super basic beginner. Um, it's not hard, so if you're a beginner knitter, you could definitely figure it out, because she really clearly explains how to do everything. And this color work looks really tough, but you only work with one color at a time, and you slip stitches. So it's actually quite easy. There are video tutorials all over the place. I will probably put up a tutorial if you guys are interested about super easy slip stitch um, color work for beginners because it's really easy and it's a great, great way to add some intricate color work and interesting details to your knitting without having to manage multiple skeins of yarn and do like stranded knitting and all that stuff. Spoiler alert! Don't watch this if you are knitting the current Casa Pinka mystery knit along called Sharon from Security. Um, it's her 2020 pandemic easy knit rectangular stole. Do not watch this part. Skip ahead if you don't want to see a spoiler um, because I'm gonna show you guys up through clue number four. If you don't mind spoilers, or if you're already past clue four anyways, clue five just came out yesterday, so if you're already breezing through that, you can go ahead and watch this. Um, and by the time this video gets uploaded, it'll probably be a few days later. So um, yeah, don't watch it if you don't wanna see a spoiler. But for those of you who aren't doing it, or don't mind seeing spoilers, or even want to see what it looks like because you wanna see how the colors fall, I have a mystery knit along to show you guys. This is the first mystery knit along I have ever done and I gotta say, I have mixed emotions. Um, I am the kind of person that I love a good surprise. I love mysteries, I love surprises. Um, I don't wanna know what you got me for my birthday. I wanna be completely surprised. I wanna be blindfolded and taken out to dinner at a surprise, but I want you to tell me how to dress beforehand so I'm dressed appropriately. But as long as you tell me that, I don't wanna know where we're going. I love those kinds of things. I love ordering mystery grab bags from indie dyers and things like that and just being surprised when it shows up in the mail. That's like my jam. So I thought I would love a mystery knit along and part of me does. There, I really am having fun with this. It's really fun getting a clue every week. It's really fun being involved in the Facebook group so I can see what people are knitting and what their um, projects look like and what their colors are like and we can all kind of like joke around. But there have been a few times that I've gotten a little stressed because I really loved the colors I picked out when they were all in skein form and they look great together. They really do. But I think if I had known what I was knitting beforehand, I might have switched one of the colors out for something different because I had three or four options I was trying to decide between. And I kind of wish that I had picked something different because while I love these colors, I feel like I could have done even better if I'd known what they were gonna look like. But that's the fun of a mystery knit along. You're not supposed to know. And the whole reason I did this was because um, this particular one especially is geared towards just simple, relaxing, no thinking, no stress knitting during a pandemic. So it's supposed to be like your happy place and your don't think about it, don't be perfectionistic. And every week when she puts out the new clue, she also puts out a little like inspirational post in the Facebook and Ravelry groups about like, you know, let go of perfectionism, don't sweat it. Um, you can go back and pick things out and move colors around if you feel like you need to, but really don't, don't worry about it too much. This isn't supposed to be perfect. This is supposed to be the journey. The joy is in the journey, not the finished piece. And I really struggle with that sometimes. So I've been trying to do this and I did, when I was wor working on clue one, I did do my colors in a different order. And so I got about halfway through clue one and then I ripped out and restarted. And I'm so glad I did that because I really like it better now. However, as I've gone through the pattern, I have not ripped out and re-knit things. Um, I have a couple mistakes in here that I thought about redoing. And then I was like, you know what? 
no, this is my fun, happy place, no stress knitting, and it's not bad enough that it's going to be like a huge deal. And if anything, I kind of like that it reminds me of that rough patch in my life or the time that I wasn't paying attention because I was talking instead or whatever it is. And so I've just left it in. So here's what I've got for my Sharon from Security Mystery Knit Along. This is starting at the top with clue one. So um, all of these yarns are my hand dyed yarns. I'm actually knitting this as a sample for my shop to put up at trunk shows and show on the website and things. This top color, which is also like right here, is from my Alice in Wonderland collection. It's called Unbirthday Party. And you probably can't see it too well in here because on the lighter colors, the sparkles don't show up as well, but it is actually my Seductress Sparkle Sock yarn with a golden sparkle to it. Um, I just love the really bright pink and fun little pops of color in this skein. This is one of my favorite colors I've ever dyed. So this was my first color I picked out. Um, I had an oopsie batch of it where the sparkle got a little dulled. And then when it was getting caked, I had an assistant helping me that day and she uh, accidentally cut some of the yarn. And I was like, you know what, don't worry. It's most of the skein is there. So I'm just gonna cake it up and use it for myself for something. I'll just knit a shop sample. It was no big deal. Um, Cause that was the only thing she messed up and it wasn't a big deal. I do that kind of stuff all the time. So I'm just knitting with it, but that was what I started with. And then I picked three other colors to go with it. This one um, is my second color, color B. And this is called Coven. This is one of my other favorite colors from my shop. It's a really deep burgundy tonal. Um, and this was also an oopsie skein because it had an unexpected little resist spot in the skein where one of the cords got wrapped too tight and it was like flashes of white all through the skein. And I could have just re-dyed it, dipped it in another pot and sold it, but I love this color and I needed something to go with on birthday party. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna cake it up and use it as is. I don't mind the tiny little flashes of white here and there. And this is my imperfect mystery knit along. So there we go. Um, color C. For me is this bright bright yellow tonal this is also from my shop and it's called icarus um oh and this was the fairy wing base by the way um it's merino and silk this one is just a super wash merino on my banshee fingering um and that icarus color is just this really bright bright yellow and look at how it looks with the other colors it's just this fun pop i love a good pop of yellow even if it's not a neon the only yellow i can't stand is a pastel yellow but all other yellows are my friends and uh, I really like how it just adds a light, bright, punchy pop to these colors. And then my last color, color D, is this aquatic tealy aqua color. This one is called Day Drinker, and it is one of my most used colors personally from the shop because I am a fan, a huge fan of the aqua colors. I really, really love it. I think it looks stunning next to the other colors. It's very similar to Unbirthday Party, but it's different enough that I do like it. Um, I just think they look really nice together. Now what I would do differently if I had known is I think I might have actually switched out on birthday party for a different color like my daddy -o, which is kind of a pinky brown tonal or um, some other type of maybe like a, a deep berry color or something like that. Just something to give it a little bit more difference between all the, the aquas because it's a lot of aqua as you can see. But I love aqua. It's my favorite color so well. I don't really have a favorite color, but it's almost my favorite color. But I do really love this. Um, I did get a little bit loose in some of my stitches down here, but that's one of the things that I was like, you know what? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It'll black out fine. <laughs> so this is through clue number four. I will be doing um, clue five this week, hopefully. Um, and I'm just having a really fun time with it. I'm making the uh, medium large size, and I have added a few extra rows here and there, taken out a couple rows that I just got bored of a section and was like, you know what, I'm done. But overall, I'm following pretty close to the knit along and I really like it. I do like the experience. I think it is. it has been overall really, really fun. There have been moments where I felt frustrated and then I realized that was because I was trying to control the process too much. And mystery knit alongs are all about letting go of control and just having fun and being surprised. And I do love that. So I'm trying to just embrace it and enjoy it. Okay, sorry this is getting kind of long, but I haven't shown you guys what I'm working on in so long. Um, I did actually finish another shawl in the meantime, but it is upstairs blocking, so we'll just look at that another time. I also finished a sweater that I've been working on for a long time, but I'm not going to show that either because it is going to be coming up in the next video. 
probably that I'm hoping to film this week that is going to be our next Saturday night at the movies. So we will talk all about that and I'll share the pattern and show my process and talk about my struggles and my victories with that one in a future video. In the meantime though, I wanted to show you that I have crossed over the bi-stitual um, rabbit hole, whatever you want to call it, and I have actually crocheted in the past, but it had been two or three years since I picked up a crochet hook, you guys, except to like do a quick border or like fix a stitch or something, but to actually crochet something, even something small, I had been meaning to do for like three years and I just haven't done it. So I finally decided it was high time that I got back into crochet just to refresh my skills and give myself a break from knitting and just do something fun. Um, I also know that I have a ton of crochet customers of my hand dyed yarn, like a lot of you guys are crocheters. And um, I'm grateful to all of you who are crocheters but continue to watch the knitting podcast because I basically just talk about knitting even though I keep saying we're going to talk about crochet. <laughs> so I really appreciate you guys sticking around but I wanted to show you that I do crochet. I've made no bones about the fact that I am primarily a knitter and crochet is just something I dip my feet into here and there. I do really like it though and I'd forgotten how fun it was you guys and when I got back into this project recently I was like gosh dang this is so fun I really need to do this more so I'm on the hunt for more crochet patterns because I had a great time but I wanted to show you something that is almost finished I thought I was finished I got it all blocked and everything I tried it on and it didn't fit so the thing that I am making are you ready dun, 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 is the Embla vest it probably doesn't look like much right now, <laughs> but this is like a little hooded vest. So there's this big, big hood at the top, which I actually added several rounds to. I made it a lot drapier and a lot fuller of a hood than the pattern called for. The pattern would have had me stop here where the green ends up at this section. And I added this teal and yellow extra few rows because I wanted it to come further on my head so that it wasn't always falling off and I just wanted to add um, more color. <laughs> also it was only written for one color in the pattern. I added the extra pattern or the extra colors at the back using up like uh, partial skeins from my stash but also because I saw a couple samples of this one knit um, and the designer had some pa some pictures in her pattern even of people doing similar things where they added like a little pop of color at the back or a pop of color around the face. And I was like, I love that. And it uses up some of my old yarn that's just sitting around waiting to be used up. So I decided to do that and I think it's great. Um, and then it's a sleeveless vest. So you just pop your little arms in each of the holes over here. There's this cute little point in the back. And then the front is supposed to come like this. And I made buttonholes in mine because you're supposed to be able to either put buttons or you put holes on both sides and you add a tie and do like a lace up. And I like the lace up, but I decided I wanted buttons on mine. So I put buttonholes in. I went ahead and blocked it. I tried it on. I should have tried it on while I was knitting it, um, but I didn't. I just went off of the measurements of the pattern and I made the size medium which should have been, and I did want it to be like just stretched tight across my bust and be pretty fitted. I didn't want it to be big and drapey. So um, I did go with the medium, but I thought I had plenty of room for it to like just fit, but not be very tight. Um, it doesn't even meet in the front. Like my boobs are way too big, you guys. So it's like, it's like ends like right here over like the nipple line of my boobs. And I'm like, hello. So there's no way I can get it buttoned. And obviously you'd wear it over a shirt. So it's not like I'm gonna be showing anything. But I'm, I'm really torn. I partially just want to be done, and it doesn't look bad. Like over a little dress or a shirt with this thrown on over it, it doesn't look bad. Uh, so as you can see, it doesn't look bad, just like thrown over a shirt or something. Here, I could just leave it open, and it could be just a cute little like vest that you leave open. So part of me wants to just be done and be like, you know what? Looks great, moving on. The other part of me is like, I do have more of this green yarn, and I have more of the contrast colors as well so I kind of want to just add a few rows of crochet right here and like pull it across technically I could stretch it but then it like stretches apart and you can like like it looks like I'm a stuffed sausage so obviously that's not gonna happen but I can't decide so what do you think should I leave it open and just be done because I have got so many other things I want to move on to and I do not have time to constantly be going back and messing with it or should I add several more rows and cover this big old boobs in front and um, add some buttons or a lace tie or something? Um, I can't decide. But here's what it looks like. Um, 
and then it has this lovely hood. Uh, I do feel like the hood's a little, like maybe I should have left it where it was supposed to be because this way it like kind of comes really far forward and I don't know if I like it, but overall I like it. <laughs> The best part about this is this uh, pattern you can make with just a plain center. You just start with like a magic loop and just crochet around and around and out um, until you get to where I picked it up. Or you can do what I did. She includes instructions for this tree of life motif, which this is the whole reason I bought the pattern, you guys. Um, that was the part that drew me to this little vest. And then I loved doing the entire thing, but this tree of life is just so beautiful. You can start with that and then add the vest to it the way I did. Um, I will give you the caveat that the vest part is actually quite easy because she has loads of photos. It's an extremely long pattern, but the crocheting part isn't actually that long. It's just that she has so many photos and so much like detailed explanation. So even if you're a beginner, this is an easy pattern to just follow her instructions. She has videos on her YouTube um, showing you how to do stuff, but the tree of life motif is not easy. And maybe it's just because I haven't picked up a crochet hook in like three or four years, but this was really tough. This was definitely the hardest part of the entire thing. Once I got done with that, the rest of it was like a breeze. But um, the Tree of Life was tricky. There were a lot of really, really wonky stitches. It's very like open and lacy. I hope you can see that. It's a really dark reddish brown color, so it's hard to see. Um, so for the yarns that I used, um, all of these are my hand dyed yarn from my shop. This middle color was just leftovers from the very first year I was in business. And this is not a color I carry usually. This was an oopsie skein that I over dyed and it, it just got a little like out of control. And so it was kind of like a reddish color that just, yeah, it just got out of control. So I had leftovers of that and it's actually a it is a worsted weight, sorry, brain fart. It's a worsted weight, um, and so I started with that, and then this yellow color that I used on the hood and around the tree of life and around the face is one of my DKs. This is my Temptress DK, 100% Superwash Merino, in the colorway Hobgoblin. It has this lovely yellow background with green and brown speckles, and I am, I'm really in love with this color. In the skein, it's just kind of like, okay, that's a lot of yellow and some crazy speckles, but it every project I've ever used it in, it is so beautiful. And then um, actually all three of these colors, the brown, the teal, and the yellow are left over from my Comfort Fade cardigan. So they're all DK weight. This is my colorway called Magic Mermaid. It's not been in the shop for a while, but it's a very tealy bluish green. And then this is Perfect Gentleman, which is a nice medium toned, super simple neutral brown. And so those are the three colors I use there. The main body of this, I dyed specifically for this vest. I saw this color in my head and I went into the dye kitchen and played around until I got it perfect. This is my worsted weight, uh, so my bombshell worsted from my shop. And this colorway is a brand new color that isn't even in the shop yet, but will be coming this fall. And I've decided to call it Forest Floor after a lot of, a lot of back and forth and struggling. I could not come up with the right color, but I'm gonna call it Forest Floor. And it's these beautiful different shades of green and then kind of a soft grayish brown and a deep brown with some little speckles. And the main reason I wanted to do this vest was because I love the Tree of Life motif, but also I'd never crocheted with hand dyed yarn. So I loved being able to see how hand dyes look in the crochet pattern. Um, and I wanted to be able to show that like on my social media and at shows and things as well. So tell me what you think. Should I leave it open or add more crochet to the front? The other thing is this pattern gives you the option of making it with or without the hood and you can add sleeves and make it like a little cropped riding jacket type style. Um, it's got a very like medieval bohemian sort of vibe to it and I really love the idea of the jacket so I kind of want to make another one because I had so much fun and it went so fast you guys. In worsted or DK weight it goes so quickly. I kind of want to make another one in a different color and make like a jacket without the hood with the long like bell sleeves and lacing up the front. So part of me is thinking maybe I'll leave the vest open and not do the buttons and then make the jacket that comes and I'll just know to like make a larger, either the larger size or just try it on and keep going as I'm making it and do the lace up ties and make kind of like a little riding jacket style out of it because I love that idea as well. Um, and if I did that, I think with that one, I would probably do the tree of life in a real light color, um, maybe like an oystery kind of champagne color or a soft pink or something like that. Um, I'm really not sure, but I think I want to do a light colored tree of life and then make the 
the body of the jacket would be a really, really deep, dark, like purple or burgundy or something like that. So that's what I'm thinking about. Let me know what you think. And yeah, that's my, cro my foray into crochet. Okay, I know this is super long, but I have one more thing to show you, and that is some spinning that I've been doing. I've actually hardly gotten any time with my wheels or my drop spindle lately, and that's largely on me. I've just been really stressed out, and I've put it on the back burner. So I'm trying to get back into my spinning, and um, part of it was I started working on a, project, on a project I was very excited about, and then I lost steam and started doubting myself and being like, I don't think I like this. So I started dyeing some speckled fiber a while back, and this is an example of one of the speckles that I did on a superwash merino. Um, and speckled fiber is dyed like speckled yarn initially, but obviously when you're pulling apart that fiber and drafting it out and spinning it, it's going to look very different. I had seen a couple of people spinning up some speckled fiber online, and it was very like pastel-y and lots of white space, and I didn't love it, but I also didn't love the colors of the fiber before it was fun, so I figured, oh, I just don't like those colors of speckles that they did, and I would dye speckles that are way prettier than that, and I would like it better. Um, I do think that is the case, but I started spinning a braid of that fiber, which is called Arm Candy, by the way. It is a yarn color in my shop, and I have sold a couple braids of fiber, and I'm gonna be bringing some more in, probably. Um, I'm on the fence about whether or not I'm gonna keep speckled fiber in my shop, but thinking about it. But I wanted to show you guys how speckled fiber spins up. Now, I am far from an expert spinner. I'm still very, very beginner. I'm very, very uneven, and I don't practice it hardly ever, so uh, it's very, very uneven. Let's just say it that way. But this was spun on my new Jensen wheel. Um, it's actually a used wheel that I purchased off of Facebook from a friend of a friend recently, and I love it. It's so small and adorable, and I'm, I'm struggling to find the exact model, but I think my wheel is one of the test wheels that they created between the Tina 1 and the Tina 2. I think I'm one of the Tina transitions, so I think it might be a limited edition, um, but I got an incredible deal on it from this gal who no longer wanted to schlep it around her house. Um, and so this is what I spun on my wheel out of the arm candy. These are the singles, so this is just one strand of fiber. Um, and you can see here it's got the greens where the tealy blue overlapped with the yellow and created this beautiful weird green that's, there's not very much green, but it's just flashes here and there. Mostly it's pink and purple. There's some white and some yellow in there and little tiny hints of blue. Hopefully you guys can see that. Um, and it, it was kind of like spinning cotton candy because it was so pretty while I was spinning. But I hit a few snags where along the way I was like, I really hate this. I don't think I'm gonna like this. And I did that little trick where you're spinning singles and you like um, hold the tension and you allow the yarn to like ply back on itself to see kind of an idea of what it would look like as a two ply. And I was like, this is really pastel and I don't like pastels. I do not knit with pastels hardly ever, occasionally, but hardly ever. So I was like, I don't know about this. Then I got the idea to ply it with a deeper, darker color. So some of my Coven, which is that burgundy color I showed you in the mystery knit along. I thought maybe some fiber like that or like a really deep, dark purple or a deep, dark teal um, would kind of balance those colors. So I started doing that. Well, then I had enough of the singles that I could ply it on itself and make a two ply just with this. And when I finished it, I actually liked it again. So partway through, I hated it. Then I really liked it at the end, and I was like, maybe I should just ply it with the same color. Um, so I can't decide if I want to do that and make it just a really light, it's not my usual colors, but I, I really kind of love it, or if I should add that deeper, darker color in there so that it's a little bit more me and I get that high contrast kind of barber pole effect. And I really can't decide what I want to do with it. So let me know what you think I should do. Um, I'm asking for your opinion on basically everything I'm working on right now because I'm super indecisive and I don't know what I want to do. But let me know if you think I should ply it with the dark color or ply it with itself. Um, I also have the option to just leave it as a single ply. I don't knit with single ply yarns very often, so it's not my normal thought, but I kind of love how it looks, and I think it would make a really light, fluffy cowl or something. Um, but I have like almost six ounces of it uh, right now because I was just using up the tail end of some fiber bumps that I had. Uh, when I dyed this and so I could just use it as a single ply and not even worry about plying and just set the twist and go for it but I kind of love the idea of seeing how it would ply I just can't decide what to do with it so those are my options let me know what you think but it is high time we get moving along so thank you guys for sticking with me through this whole long long video rambling on about my knitting adventures and crochet um, but 
let me know what you think about my projects and I will do my best to get that Saturday night at the movies out to you guys soon because it's going to be awesome and I cannot wait to show you the sweater I knit. It was so intricate and so hard and so time consuming, but I feel like a boss once I got it done. So I cannot wait to show it to you guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys are having a great week, but it is now time to cast off. Love you.